Today I want to talk to you about seowriting.ai and also some of the other tools that I'm using along with SEO writing. And so what I really wanted to do was uh, just take you through uh, my workflow for creating a blog post, uh, talk to you a little bit about why I think seowriting.ai is such a good tool, especially for new bloggers and uh, show you what they have in store as far as features. Uh, the one thing I love about seowriting.ai is they really listen to their customers. And so I want to show you how they do that and uh, how that affects the quality of the tool and the features that are coming in the tool. So uh, to start off with, uh, this is the seowriting.ai interface. So once you've set up an account with SEO Writing, this is the first screen that you see. And if you look up here, you can see something called Roadmap. It's in the top navigation bar at the top right. Uh, and that is really a crucial thing for you to become familiar with. Now, it's not going to help you write better articles, but what it is going to do is allow you to help determine where SEO writing goes from a feature perspective, because they really do listen to um, the people that go into that roadmap tool and offer suggestions. So let's just take a look quickly at that. So the, you know, the one thing with software development, uh, there's sort of two schools of thought. And one is uh, the old school of thought, which is a bunch of developers sit around, they look at other products and they go, here's what I think people need. And then there's products like SEO writing, and quite frankly, others as well, that will say, hey, my customers are using my tool and here's what they expect from us. Here's the features that they're requesting from us. Now we're gonna prioritize those features and try to give them those features so they have a better experience using the tool. Uh, so for example, uh, one of the items they completed was one of my suggestions, which is something called text de decoration, bolded keywords. So uh, I went in and I said, I really like the idea of having bolded keywords within a blog post. Can you do that? And basically, I wanted to just add intermittent text decorations to keywords within a blog post for emphasis and to break up longer text blocks. And they did that and they've completed that. Uh, they have a complete roadmap here. So you can see things that have just been completed. So for example, uh, they added key takeaways as a, an option in a blog post now. Uh, they're trying, they've addressed the expense of some of the AI generated images to make those uh, less expensive and more affordable to give you more AI uh, uh, image credits. Uh, they have a variety of different things here uh, in their in progress area. And in fact, if we go into this and we do a quick search, I also ask them, oops, I also ask them to do uh, something called FAQ with unused keywords. So what I wanted uh, SEO writing to do is if you manually input a bunch of keywords and you can manually input up to 50 keywords of your choice. So then SEO writing attempts to write the article with those keywords and, you know, it doesn't always use all of them. So I want a post to be as SEO optimized as possible. So I want all of my keywords to be used. So what it's going to do when they finish this is they're going to create the FAQ section with any unused keywords to raise the overall document SEO score. So my point is, you know, I like them because when you give them an idea and it's something that they think that they can carry out and they think is useful for the tool, they actually go and do it. So it makes me a real fan of the tool because of that. So let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard. We want to go ahead and do a one-click blog post. This is typically my workflow. 
they do have bulk article generation. And you, you can certainly do that if you have a big laundry list of keywords and you want to set up bulk article generation and walk away and come back the next day and have a bunch of articles already written, you can do that. I tend to just do everything post by post. I know some people are going to say that's slower, but that's just the way I happen to like my workflow uh, to work. So if you click on one click blog post, it takes you um, to this page and you have to enter a main keyword. So part of my workflow uh, when I'm putting together a blog post is I use another tool called Low Fruits. Low Fruits is my keyword research tool. And so um, really what I do is uh, go in here and I just work with Low Fruits so it finds me different mountain biking posts. In this case, I have a list of mountain biking articles uh, and keywords that you could write and uh, I can go in here, I can look and see where there are weak spots. So when you see these fruits here, these fruit icons, these the more that you see, uh, the bigger the weak spot is for a particular keyword and the higher likelihood you have for ranking. So for instance, I'm going to uh, have SEO writing, create an article called Mountain Biking Over 60. And it's got three fruits here. You can have as many as six, maybe seven. Maybe I've seen seven. But uh, here's what I mean by weak spots. So a blue fruit is a forum. Typically, if you see a lot of forums, it means there hasn't been a good blog post written uh, about that topic. So forums are always a good thing to see. So it points that out. Then what it does is it shows you uh, weak points. So here you have in the sixth position uh, in Google search for mountain biking over 60, you have a DA17 website, and then you have a DA13 website. So uh, both of those uh, with a good blog post, even if you have low domain authority, uh, you have a fairly good chance of at least getting in the top 15, maybe in the top 10, and bumping one of these out. Uh, so I'm not going to go any deeper into low fruits. I have other videos on low fruits that you can watch, but it is my keyword tool of choice. And I'm showing you this because it's part of my overall workflow. So I want to write an article about mountain biking over 60. I'm over 60, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> but I am. And uh, I know a lot about mountain biking. I've been mountain biking since before there was ever suspension on mountain bikes. And so this is an article that would be near and dear to my heart. I could add a lot of my own expertise to it. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go back over to seowriting.ai. We'll drop it in as a main keyword. And then SEO writing will generate a title for you. It's going to do that. So Unleashing Adventure, Mountain Biking Over 60 Guide. I like it. And the, the one thing that I really like about the titles that seowriting.ai creates is they always use your main keyword in the title. They don't try to embellish it. They don't make any changes to it. And personally, I like to have my titles this way because if I go into Low Fruits and I see people are searching for a particular uh, long tail keyword, I want to replicate that in my title. Uh, just to make it easier for Google to understand what it is I'm writing about. So now you have this section called Core Settings. And this is where you would set the language, your tone of voice, your point of view. I typically choose friendly. Uh, my point of view, I like first person because when I go and I look at this article that it, that it creates for me, I'm going to add some of my own anecdotes and personal perspectives, and so I like a first-person point of view. Uh, my target country is the United States. Uh, article size, you have a choice. You can do small, medium, or large. I typically pick medium. Medium is 2,400 to 3,600 words. Uh, I think for this particular topic, it's plenty. 
So the next piece is, do you want some AI images? Now, this is one reason why I really like SEO writing.ai because I like the fact that it does put uh, AI images in my post if I want it. Now, you have a variety of places where you can put them. And you, have, you can go with none. So if you have all of your own stock photos and you want to put those in yourself, then don't use any AI photos. Just say none. If you prefer uh, just a feature image and then the rest are your own images, uh, you can use after H1 only. That will give you your feature image. So in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and just say each section so you can see what it looks like. And then you have an image uh, quality choice. So note that high quality images cost 10 tokens. So you have a set, a set number of tokens that you can work with. Um, so if you have a nine uh, section article that gets produced, it's going to use 90 of your tokens. So you have high quality. You also have optimal quality. The optimal quality images just uh, are a little lower quality. Um, I prefer to go with the high quality when I can. Uh, so I'm going to choose high quality. Now, this is a big thing here too, image style. Now, there's a variety of image styles. You can go with like a photorealistic image if you want to. Um, personally, I have found cinematic images work the best. And they, and, and really, you know, you can experiment with this. Some of the photo quality images work pretty well too. I will say, you know, from my experience so far with AI image creation, the hardest thing that it has, uh, you know, the hardest thing that AI images have to recreate are great images of people's faces. And occasionally, you know, if there's close-ups of hands, you may notice somebody has four fingers instead of five. Although many of many of these AI image creators are getting a lot better at fixing things like that. So let's just do cinematic. So there's a couple things that you can do here. You can just leave this blank and just let SEO writing create the article. Um, it will generate some NLP keywords for you. So if I choose that, uh, it will add these keywords. I could add additional keywords if I wanted to. So if you don't have an SEO optimization tool, you know, this is probably what I would do is choose the, let it, you know, pick these NLP keywords. In my case, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I am going to use an SEO optimization tool that I really like. If you've watched some of my videos before, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that I'm going to go to Neuron Writer and uh, use my Neuron Writer tool. So I just want to grab my C keyword. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to manually input my own uh, keywords into uh, SEO writing. And that's why I asked the folks at SEO writing to create that uh, FAQ with unused keywords. Neuron Writer has a feature like that, but I wanted it in SEO writing. So I didn't have to go back into Neuron Writer a second time and have it create that information for me. And so let's go ahead and start a new query. So mountain biking over 60 will hit start and let Neuron Writer do its thing. So I'll just pause the video while it's doing this and come back when it's done. So Neuron Writer has created or has finished the content query. Let's open it up. And basically what it will do is it captures the top 10 ranking. Uh, well, it'll check off the top 10 uh, ranking articles that are in the SERP now. And so really what you want to do is go through here and make sure that these all match the search intent. So the very first one is, what is the best mountain bike for older riders? So I'm not interested in writing about what is the best mountain bike for older riders. I don't think that captures the search intent. We're writing about just 
what do you have to think about if you're mountain biking over the age of 60? So I'm going to remove that. I don't want to try to rank against that. All the rest of the articles look like they match search intent. Here's one seven tips to keep mountain biking after the age of 40. That's okay. Can I really mountain bike 60 miles at age 60? I think that's good. So we'll keep that. So now that we have a series of articles that we're going to rank against, what Neuron Writer is going to do is go out, look at those articles, look at all the NLP keywords being used, uh, and then uh, create a plan for us to um, optimize our content against these articles to give us a chance to rank. And what I mean by that is right here, you can see terms in the article. These are basic terms that you'd want to have in your article. These are the extended terms that you'd want to have in your article. And so how do you get those terms over into SEO writing? You know, uh, Neuron Writers made that very easy for you to do. I'll show you how that works. And one little piece of housekeeping here, uh, all of the products that I'm talking about right now, and I show you in this video, I'm an affiliate for. So there's links in the video description. If you click them, if you make a purchase, I do make a commission. So I just wanted to be transparent about that. But I did purchase all of these products myself. I purchased them and I use them. And so, um, I feel comfortable suggesting them because they work for me and I think they'll work for you. So let's go ahead and grab the list of terms. And I'm going to pause the video and then come back as soon as I'm ready to dump these into SEO writing and continue with the article. All right. Um, here's all the terms that I want to put in SEO writing. And let me grab these. Now, SEO writing will hold will take 50 terms. I'm just going to grab what I think are close to 50. This is probably more than 50, but let's just go ahead and we'll just grab all of them. And this was the list that I just downloaded out of uh, Neuron Writer. So let's go back. We're going to go ahead and add our keywords. So there's the 50. The rest of these I'm not a, I'm not going to be able to include. That's okay. So then we're in the structure section of SEO writing. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. Uh, I like to have a conclusion. If SEO writing wants to include some tables to grab some data and make it easier for people to understand what's being talked about, I'm perfectly okay with that. H3s are fine. Uh, if it wants to make some lists, that's great. Italics, if it wants to use italics, that's good. Quotes, if there's any quotes. Um, key takeaway section I want. I want an FAQ section. And this is that bolded text where it bolds some of the keywords uh, in a document that I was talking about earlier. So... I don't happen to use WordPress. I, I use static HTML and, an, and another tool, but it's got a great, you know, publish to WordPress capability. So if you're a WordPress user, don't worry. They've got you covered there. Um, so language model. So maybe this is a, a place where SEO writing uh, might be a little deficient compared to a tool like Koala Writer. So with Koala Writer, you can write an article in full uh, GPT-4 language model if you want to. Now, it's not cheap. It's about $6 an article uh, when you write that way because it has to use quite a few credits. So what Koala Writer is doing is it's combining GPT-3.5 uh, 3.5 Turbo 16K and GPT-4. So they're using a mix of models. Now, I found it to work quite well. Uh, I like the quality that I'm getting, and we'll just see how this works out for us. 
Um, now, the one thing I wanted to point out is the only GPT-4 capability is coming soon. You know, an, another thing that you can do, I feel that SEO writing is a very economical tool to use. So if you feel that you want to embellish some of your blog posts with GPT-4 uh, content, um, you know, you can always get a GPT plus chat GPT plus account and have access to GPT-4 if you need it. So there's ways around it. I happen to have a, a, a premium account with chat GPT. So if I really need uh, something written in, in four, I can do that. Uh, it's not necessary, though. Uh, I've been very happy with the output I'm getting so far. So I pick the language model. So we just go up to the top. And now we're going to hit run. So I'm going to hit run. And then while it's creating the article, I'm just going to pause the video again. And when it's done, we'll come back and take a look at the output and go from there. All right, we've got an article. And so it's 3,034 words in length. And let's go ahead and just take a look at it. So this is a great feature image. Um, when I look at the mountain bike, you know, sometimes uh, some complex um, items like bikes and uh, fly reels and different things are hard for AI uh, image creators to uh, put together, but this looks good. Um, so you can see some of the text decorations that are in here. And these, these basically are just bolded text that these are keywords that are being used. And, you know, it just breaks up the text a little bit, makes it a little bit more readable, emphasizes uh, what the viewer is seeing or reading. It's got a key takeaway section. Embracing the thrill, why mountain biking? So because I picked first person, what it does is it starts writing in the first person when I climb onto, onto my mountain bike and pedal off in the wilderness, a sense of freedom washes over me. So I don't know if I'll keep this, but this is a good place where I could put in some of my own stories about being a senior mountain biker and riding on trails. And, you know, a lot of people are concerned when they get older, should I, should I keep riding? like I used to when I was younger, and I can attest to the fact that you should and you can. Um, this I like, safety first. This is really important, and so I'm glad that it emphasized this, especially for older riders, riding within your skill level, all good stuff. And I like the fact that it put these in italics, just makes the readability a lot easier. Um, this image is probably not one that I would use. Uh, it's not a bad image. It's just not one that I think is appropriate. This one is fine. It's a filler image. Um, you can see with a bike here, it's just having a little bit of a tough time in this area. So... I chose to put something in each section just because I wanted you to see what the images were like. Uh, a lot of times I have so many photos from mountain biking trips, I put my stuff in here if I was going to write a blog post. So unfortunately, these last two images I probably wouldn't use. Um, this you're definitely going to have to fact check and see whether these are trails that would be suitable for seniors. Um, Again, I don't know if you need this table, but they put this in here. And if I do need a table to augment any content, uh, I go to ChatGPT and I have it build a table for me and I put it in. That's one way to do it. Another table with exercise repetition sets, you know, keeping your body strong. Uh, this image is definitely not going to work. This image will. This is another image that will work. So this is cool. This little poll quote in here. Now, what I like is it just says Jane, 65, right? So 
Do I know if this is really a quote from somebody? I don't know. But, but because they don't have a last name with it, you don't really have to worry about fact-checking. It just emphasizes a point about writing when you're older. And I like it. It breaks up the, the text and looks, looks good. This is a usable image as well. Another quote, poll quote they have in here. Is this image usable? Well, if people are looking at it, I mean, they obviously know it's not a, it's not a photo. So uh, personally, I would leave it in. I don't think it's objectionable. Um, I think if you're worried about using too many image tokens and you don't want to use them all up, I'd have uh, SEO writing just create your um, feature image only and leave it at that and then use other stock photos for uh, the rest of the post. It continues in the first person. And you just need to read the article. This is a great image. Looks great. It's got a conclusion. It's got an FAQ. So um, that's the article. I'm going to go up to the top here. We're going to pull this into Neuron Writer. I, I really want to see what kind of uh, SEO optimization score we get in Neuron Writer. So let's copy it. And let's go over to the content query we made, which was mountain biking over 60. We'll copy this in. Notice, doesn't bring the images over, but I'm not concerned about that right now. I'm really concerned more about what is my SEO optimization score. Now, remember, we want to also copy this H1, the title H1, and put it in the meta title area. That's going to make the score go up. Uh, yes, you need a meta description right now. I'm not going to worry about it. It's not going to affect the overall score that much, if anything. So we're going to close that. So here we are. We're at 63. So let's go ahead and take a look here. The highest of all the selected competitors in that list of articles we were looking at when we did the content query is a 54. And the top 10 have a median score of 44. So here we are at 63. So now we're outranking uh, or we're outscoring the competition that was in the top 10. Now, the thing that you need to be aware of is you have a chance of possibly bumping those lower domain authority sites out of their positions uh, with your article. Uh, but for higher domain authority sites that have been around for quite a few years, have lots of backlinking structure, um, and, you know, those are going to be tough to break into until your site's been around uh, long enough to also grow its domain authority score. But right now what we're shooting for is lower domain authority sites and bumping them out of their positions with better written articles. So they need to be factual. Um, they need to be well written. And they uh, also, um, I feel, need to have your expertise included in the content uh, to personalize it and show that you do know what you're talking about. It's your blog. Uh, you've picked this niche. You must know something about it. So, uh, you know, I just never uh, publish an AI article straight out of the box and don't embellish it with my own content. Now, there's a couple schools of thought behind this, and we'll, we'll get to this in a second. So anyway, we, we're at a 63 uh, that's great. That's why I like to use Neuron Writer because it gives me a good list of keywords that help me outscore my competition. So let's go over to originality.ai and let's go ahead and scan this article and check it for AI, for plagiarism, and for readability. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I fully expect this scan from an AI for detecting AI to be 100%. We'll talk about that in a second. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start the scan and then I'm going to pause the video while it's scanning and when it's complete, uh, we'll resume. All right. So as I suspected, the AI detection score is 100% AI. So here's what I'll say about this. Uh, what I'm attempting to do is take my articles that are written by AI writers, and I'm trying to write enough of my own content and add it to those articles so I get like a 75-25 mix, 75% AI detection, 25% original. I have no idea whether this will future-proof my articles against any um, kind of Google updates that could occur in the future where a fully 100% AI article might be penalized. Because right now, Google says, hey, if it's AI, uh, you know, we really don't care as long as, as it's providing value to the user. So again, that's subjective. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, an article that's factual and well-written and readable, uh, if it's 100% AI, Google's okay with it. That's today. That's what they say today. What's going to happen in the future, I don't know. Uh, do I think that Google has the capability of detecting AI articles like originality does, of course. So that's the only reason why I try to do this 75-25% mix. Uh, in my mind, I think maybe that future-proofs me against any future Google uh, search engine updates that could penalize a site. But again, who knows? That's just my guess. That's what I'm doing. Uh, you can choose to do and, and release AI articles without any additional input from yourself if you choose to. So how do we do in the plagiarism score? This is great, 0% plagiarized. So that's good. And lastly, let's look at readability. And we're in the green on readability. So overall, uh, SEO writing did a really good job from, an, from a perspective of a good SEO score by using the Neuron Writer keywords. Um, and again, my only beef with this article is going to be some of the images. They're, they're not usable for this particular post. Now, a lot of it's going to depend on the niche that you're in, and, uh, and, and that's going to really determine the kind of photos that you're going to get out of these AI uh, image generation tools. So again, that's sort of my workflow. I like to use low fruits. Um, uh, I couple that with Neuron Writer to get my keywords and to uh, do SEO optimization because I could optimize this article more fully in Neuron Writer if I wanted to. I just um, uh, didn't go into it in this particular video, but I could have definitely bumped that score up even higher if I wanted to. And then I use originality.ai mainly to check for plagiarism and to check for uh, readability. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And until next time, take care.